Back in elementary school, when I was 10 years old, I met a kid named Tani. Tani was new in my school, and shortly after the school year started, we quickly became friends. We had a lot in common, like our love for sports and video games. I also found out that he lived about a mile away from me, which was cool. We quickly became almost best friends just weeks after we met. Soon, we would hang out sometimes after school. Usually either he would go to my house or I would go to his. But we hung out we would play sports out in the yard or video games inside. Not all that long after we became friends though, I did realize that Tommy was not perfect. He seemed to have a bit of a temper and kind of a moody personality in general. Some days he would not be very talkative at all. And when I tried talking sports with him or something, he wouldn't say much. Other times, if we were playing video games or sports and I beat him, he would get really mad and stop talking to me for a while. Now, this is not that big of a deal for guys. Most of my friends were really competitive and sometimes would get angry. But sometimes with Tommy, it felt a little bit disrespectful, I remember. But on top of that, over time, I started suspecting that Tommy was stealing things from me. This was back in the day, and I remember that we both had PlayStation 2s as well as PSPs. For those that don't know or remember, PSPs were handheld PlayStation devices that you could get games for and stuff. Well, soon my games started to go missing. At first, I chalked it up to myself being disorganized. I would lose things all the time, and my room was often really messy. But one time, I was playing a game on my PSP kind of a lot that week. I had been putting that game in the same spot on my dresser when I wasn't playing it. After Tommy came over one day, the very next kid I couldn't find it. That was the first time I realized he might have been taking my things. We would go to each other's houses quite a bit, so he had a good idea of what games I had, and I had a good idea of what games he had. All in all, I think I lost probably five different games over the span of a month, and that wasn't it. I was the last one of my footballs and a few of my baseball cards. Now, I didn't think everything that I had missing was stolen by Tommy. I figured that some things I lost on my own, but I had a strong suspicion that he took some of them. Then, one night, I went to Tommy's for a sleepover. My mom dropped me off at his house, and I remember that it was a Friday night. After I got to his house, we stayed up really late playing video games in Tommy's room. Pretty soon, it was probably like midnight, and Tommy's parents had gone to bed. We were still gaming, and I happened to notice a PSP gin on Tommy's bookshelf. We was kind of behind a book, but when I looked at it, I realized it was one of the same games that I had recently lost, and one that I knew Tommy didn't have. When I saw this, I accused him straight through his face. I pointed at it and said, This is my game, isn't it? Tommy immediately got defensive, saying that it wasn't money, and claiming that his parents had just bought it for him recently. Now, when either of us got in pity or games, we would often tell each other about it out of excitement. He hadn't mentioned a word of it. I said to Tommy that lots of my things were going missing recently, and I thought that he was to blame. This made him furious. He said some stuff like he wouldn't want my stupid games and he gets his own things. Debbie said he didn't want me in his room anymore. I was angry and said funny and walked out. Tommy then walked out of his room and we both went down the hallway. His house had a large sliding glass door in the back leading to the patio. Tommy then opened the door and told me to get out. At this point is when I started to think, wait, what is he doing? I left as he asked me to and then he slammed the door in my face and locked it. He then covered the window with the blinds so that I couldn't see in. I was now locked outside of Tommy's house at a little bit after midnight. Now, Tommy and I had fought several times before as best friends, but it never came to this. We were like brothers, and I didn't think he would do something like kick me out of his house. I stood there, thinking maybe Tommy would cool up and come to his senses. Then he would let me back in. What was I supposed to do? I was 10 years old, had no self when back then, and was a mile away from my parents' house, who were also probably asleep. I just stood there, wondering what I should do. After probably like 10 minutes, there was no sign of Tommy coming back. I knocked on the sliding door a few times, and I got nothing in response. It soon became clear that Tommy was not going to let me back in. After standing outside of Tommy's house for probably 20 minutes, 
I decided that I would try to walk home. I walked down Tommy Street along the sidewalk and went back to my house. It was kind of spooky walking back by myself so late at night as a 10 year old. Eventually though, after probably 30 minutes, I did make it back to my parents' house. I knocked on the front door, but did not get an answer at first. I figured that they were asleep. I kept knocking as loud as I could. And finally, after like 10 minutes, my dad opened up the front door. He was really confused to see me, but he let me inside and after going in, my mom was up too. I told them what happened and then I went to bed. The next morning, my parents and I looked extremely hard for all of the things that I had missing. I only found one of the things that I knew was lost. I'm still to this day 100% sure that Tommy stole the games from me. After we searched, my parents called his parents and they were nice. They apologized for him taking me out of the house and said that they would have a talk with him. But later that day, they called and said that Tommy told them he didn't steal anything and they believed him if he gave him his word. To me, his word meant nothing. Tommy's dad told my dad that he would be glad to buy me another game, the one that I lost. But that wasn't what it was about. I knew that I didn't just lose it and I wanted Tommy to admit that he stole it from me. But he never did. After the night Tommy kicked me out, I never hung out with him again. I saw him at school many times, but he always ignored me and I always ignored him. After that, we ended up going to different middle schools and different high schools as well. I'm still angry with him for stealing my things and for kicking me out in the middle of the night. A couple of years ago, when I was fresh out of college, I moved to a new city for my job. I had never been there before and didn't know anyone at all. It was just myself and my dog Daisy living in my one bedroom apartment. I met some people at work that were cool and over time became friends with them. But really the first friend that I made when I lived there was another girl named Alex. I first met Alex at a dog park just days after I moved. I took Daisy there and among the other dogs and owners was Alex. I just remember that we got to talking about dogs and she was really nice. Then our conversation changed to talking about our jobs and stuff. She said that she worked for some company I can't remember, but seemed to have a lot of the same interests as me. Alex said that we should hang out sometime and gave me her number to text. Over the next couple of weeks, we actually did hang out a few times. Alex came to my apartment twice and we also got coffee on several occasions. She quickly became my best friend in my new city. But one night, Alex was going to come over to my apartment. I worked pretty normal hours, but hers were a little more unusual. She told me that she got off of work at 7 and then would come over afterwards. I gave her a code to enter my apartment building and then left my door unlocked. I was in the living room watching TV on the couch. I figured that she would be there pretty soon, but as time went on, she didn't arrive yet. So I texted Alex at probably like 7.30, asking her if she was still coming over. I remember she said yes and that she would text me when she was there. So after that, I just went back to watching TV and figured that she would show up soon. Some more time went by and I didn't bother to text her again. I really don't know how long it was, but sitting on my couch was becoming very relaxing and I soon fell asleep. When I woke up, it was probably like 10 PM. After waking up, I realized how late it was and I figured that Alex wasn't going to make it. I looked at my phone, but she hadn't texted me anything at all. This was pretty strange. I was sort of mad at her about this, so I didn't bother to text her right away. Plus, I honestly wasn't fully awake yet from my nap on the couch. I decided to just go to sleep because the next day was Friday and I did have work in the morning. I walked into my bathroom and took about five minutes to get ready for bed. Then I entered my bedroom next to it in the hallway. I went to my closet to put some clothes away and as soon as I opened the closet door, I saw Alex. She was like kind of hiding behind some stuff in there and I jumped back and screamed when I saw her. It was one of the most startling things I've witnessed in my entire life. After a couple of seconds, she ran out of there and left my bedroom. I didn't really know what to do. I left the bedroom and then saw Alex leaving my apartment. She didn't say a word the entire time. 
I had no idea why she was hiding in my closet. After a few minutes of trying to make sense of it all, I tried calling Alex, but she didn't answer. Then I tried texting her, but she didn't respond to that either. I just went to bed after that and thought that maybe she would give me an explanation the next day, but she didn't. In fact, I never heard from Alex again. To this day, I don't know what she was doing. She obviously arrived at my place sometime when I was asleep. She didn't bother to wake me up, and I clearly didn't hear her getting there. Maybe she was going to rob me or something. I have no idea. Either way, it really creeps me out looking back on it. This happened back when I was 11 years old. During that time, I had a best friend named Will. Will and I would hang out all the time and go to each other's houses, and we only lived a little bit less than a mile away from each other. Our sisters were also really good friends with each other and would hang out a lot too. Well, one day, my parents were going somewhere for a few hours at night. I think they were going to a restaurant, but I'm not really sure. Anyways, it was a Friday and my brother and I were going to Will's while they were gone. My sister and Will's sister were already hanging out at one of their friend's houses. So my parents dropped me and my brother off at Will's house. My brother, by the way, was seven at the time. We got to Will's at probably like four or five in the afternoon. And I remember that when we got there, Will's mom told us that he was in a bad mood. This was not good because I was hoping that we would be able to play video games or something. He was upstairs in his bedroom and wouldn't come out. So my parents left and then my brother and I went into the living room to hang out. Will's mom then went up to his room to try to get him to come out. In the meantime, my brother and I were playing with the marble maze game. Will's mom soon told us that she couldn't get him out of his room and he didn't want to talk to anyone. Apparently he was mad because his sister's cat peed on one of his shirts. Anyways, my brother and I were having a good time playing with the marble maze and probably an hour or two went by. At one point, Will left his badger, but it was only to shoot his mom with a Nerf gun. Then he went back inside. He didn't even say hi to me or my brother. Sometime later, Will's mom told my brother and I that she had to get my sister and Will's sister. They were then going to come back to Will's house. She said that she would be gone for maybe 20 minutes. Then it was just Will, my brother, and me. I'm not really sure where Will's dad was. I decided to go up to try to talk to Will. I went up to his bedroom and knocked on his door, but he didn't answer. I called out asking if I could come in. At first, he didn't respond. Then, after a few seconds, I heard him say no. I went back downstairs after that. It was then that my brother suggested that we go back home. I always had a spare house key on me that I used when I got home from school. Our house was well within walking distance, or it take maybe 15 minutes, and I had stayed home by myself a couple of times before to that point. My brother really wanted to play GameCube, so I agreed. My brother and I then left Will's house without telling him or anyone. By now, it was probably like 7 p.m. and the sun was coming setting. We walked along the sidewalk in the direction of our street. Maybe like halfway into the walk, this car pulled up right next to us. I looked over to see the window rolling down. The driver had a mustache and hat and asked us if we needed a ride. I said no and we were just going home. The guy said okay and then drove on. But literally like two minutes later, he was back. He drove up again and stopped on the side of the road once more. This time, he did not ask us if we needed a ride, but told us to get inside of his car. My brother and I found this R and said no. By this time, we just wanted to get away from the guy and realized that we might be in trouble. The guy actually drove off again though. We didn't see him for a few minutes. Then, when we were entering our street, I saw the car again. They started to pull up alongside of us and slow down. This time, I told my brother to run. We both took on and went through the neighbor's yard that we were watching in front of and past their house. Then we went into their backyard and ran through it to the next backyard of the house next door. There, we hid behind a tree in the backyard for probably like two or three minutes. My brother and I both knew that back guy was troubled. I looked out to make sure that he was gone, and finally he was. Then my brother and I went back home. 
We were able to make it inside safely, and luckily I didn't see the car that followed us after that. My brother and I played games here until my parents got back. However, they told us that we should have let Will's mom know that we were leaving, and they were right. She could have given us a ride home or something, and we would have avoided that guy altogether. I was just young and didn't really think it through that well though. I'm really glad that my brother and I were able to make it back home safely.